In this lesson, we'll continue learning about flood fills, this time focusing on texture fills in Sketchbook Designer. All right, great. So this is the Lesson 19 Begin file. And you know, in the last lesson, we learned about some flood fill basics. We looked at solid fills, linear fills, and radial fills. And we worked completely on vector uh, graphics. We worked on a vector layer. But in reality, we can apply these types of fills to both paint and vector layers. So uh, I have a paint layer selected here. And you'll notice if I come in here and grab my linear fill, we can just simply click and drag. And we're drawing out our linear ramp. Now, in terms of a paint layer, uh, more than likely you're going to want to constrain the fill either with a selection or with a mask of some sort. So I'm just going to hit escape, grab my lasso tool, just come in here and draw a selection. And again, you can see we can limit the fill and what area it can cover based on, like I said, a selection or either that or a mask. So let me hit Escape and Control D because I want to jump over here to this texture layer at this point. And if I go ahead and reveal that to you, you'll see here that we've got the shoe that we looked at in the previous lesson, but I've converted all of the curves to guide curves. Now I've done this because I've removed the stroke from all the curves and I wanted you to still be able to see them here. So if we show this color layer, you'll see here that we still indeed have our color. So um, as a matter of fact, it looks like we have a fill on this one. Let me just delete that out. There we go. And we'll just delete this one as well. All right, fantastic. So um, now at this point, we want to begin to incorporate some texture into our shoe. Maybe for, again, these darker areas here. So I'm going to come in and lock my color layer. So we're just going to work on our texture layer here. And remember, there's curves on that texture layer. They're just guide curves. So let's come up here and grab our texture fill. Now, uh, with the texture fill, we're going to need to specify a texture that we want to fill with. And you can see here is the default texture that we're working with. Now, we can come in here and import a texture. And I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. Maybe we have a tileable texture that we want to be able to utilize. Or we can come down here to our custom palette and begin to take a look at some of these texture fills that Sketchbook Designer comes with on either the building materials, the wood tiles, the fabric, or the nature tabs here. So uh, let's come in here and let's maybe go to fabric. And if you mouse over these, you can kind of get the name that they're uh, assigned. Maybe we want to use this one. Let's go ahead and go with this one here. I like this one a lot. So this one looks kind of like a shoe texture. So um, let's come in here and again, we're going to just zoom in. And again, working on our texture layer, let's just come in, click and drag. And what we're doing here is we're dragging out the fill manipulator. So now in the case of this area that I just filled, we're not seeing our texture. Now uh, let's come up here and grab our curve selection tool uh, because I spotted a little red dot here. This particular control point doesn't look like it's snapped. So we'll go ahead and snap that in there. There we go. Let's go ahead and grab our texture fill again and click and drag. All right, great. There we go. Now we're able to fill that. So I'm going to delete that, jump back over here to this fabric that we were working with previously. And you can see I can click and I can drag out my texture fill. All right, great. So this particular fill has some nice striations to it that would maybe be fitting for this particular example, um, just in terms of kind of the stretching that happens in a shoe's fabric when a foot uh, has actually been wearing it. So uh, maybe we want these to run kind of in this, this linear fashion along the length of the shoe. So um, again, this is our manipulator here. So we can come in just like with the radial and the linear fills, and we can begin to kind of manipulate this texture. Now you'll notice over here in our attribute editor, we have several different options here. We have uh, the number of repeats that can be adjusted in both the U and the V. And we can also flip the texture in the U and the V. Now we also have some additional settings here uh, that are related to substance textures. And we're going to learn about that here in just a moment. But um, these settings are going to be unique to this texture. You can see here things like luminosity, saturation. We can shift the hue. Uh, we can adjust the primary colors, uh, pattern, things that were created. All these settings that uh, were created for this texture in an application called substance. So um, I'm going to come over here 
Again, we're going to just kind of morph this by grabbing these corners. We can come in here and add an additional control point to store, sort of stretch that down. Now, you want to stay away from this pivot right here. This pivot will start to make your texture look a little strange. If you begin to kind of move it like that, you'll see that the texture is getting really bunched up over here, and it's much, much larger over here. So be really careful with this pivot. If that's not the look you're going for, you probably want to stay away from it. All right, I'm pretty happy with that particular texture. So I'm just going to hit Enter. And you can see that confirms the texture there. So um, now we can utilize any of these different texture presets down here in our custom palette. So I mentioned earlier that uh, Sketchbook Designer supports Substance Textures. Now, Substance is an application that's built by a company called Allegro Rhythmic, and I'm going to be showing you how we can bring in Substance Textures here into Sketchbook Designer. But the examples I'm going to show you, I'm not going to be able to include them in the project files, because they were actually removed from the trial version of Substance Player. So uh, if you want to go to their website and download the trial of Substance Player, you'll have access to all these files that I'm about to use. So um, now we've utilized this sort of this canvas texture here, but um, let's come over here in our attribute editor and let's hit import. And here are my substance texture samples. So um, I'm going to go ahead and grab one of these. Maybe we can come in and grab something like, uh, oh, and it doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and grab maybe this stonework texture and we'll go ahead and hit open on that. Now, this is obviously not a texture that I would probably want to utilize on this shoe. Uh, it looks like I've actually already got a fill in there. So um, let me go ahead and just work with that here. We'll just kind of zoom in on that. And again, let me just delete that. And we'll come back over to our texture fill. Jump back in and grab that one more time. And I'm going to just click and drag this out. And I want to drag it out in this area here. So, um, so this is kind of a rock texture. Uh, it really, like I said, doesn't really fit the shoe, but I wanted to show you an example of what a substance texture looks like. So this was imported, like I said, from um, the examples that are included with the trial of Substance Player. And again, we can adjust the number of tiles in both the U and the V. You can see here, if we're adjusting the U, it has the effect of kind of squishing the texture. And the V is going to do it in the opposite direction. So I'm going to set those back to one really quickly here. We can also come in and flip the texture in both the U and the V if we wanted to. But in the case of this particular substance texture, again, we've got a lot of different options here in terms of settings that we can begin to come in and adjust. Maybe we want to shift the hue of the texture. This is, there's not a real dominant hue here, but uh, we can come in and adjust saturation. We can come in and adjust luminosity. We can come in and adjust the depth of the texture the light angle. You can see we really have a lot of very, very fine control over um, a lot of different things here that have to do with this texture. We can come in and adjust colors. Maybe we want to come in and add a different color. You can kind of see that as affecting the edges of our rocks there. There we go. There's another one. I don't think adding a color is doing much to this texture. So um, we can come in and adjust shadow opacity. We wanted to maybe bring the shadows back or even uh, increase the shadows some. Shadow distance. We'll just kind of come through here. And ultimately, you can see there's a lot of different settings. So um, I would encourage you to go out and maybe download Substance Player and look for these files. If we come in here, let me show you what they look like again. They're SBSAR files. So these are Substance Texture files. And actually, if you are interested in learning more about Substance and their so the software, we actually have a course in our library called Introduction to Substance Designer. So uh, maybe you've purchased that product and you'd like to learn more about how to utilize it. Uh, in that course, Josh will walk you through learning that software. So um, this, again, is a Substance Texture and Sketchbook Designer does support them. So um, in the case of, like I said, this particular cloth texture, um, for this particular asset, that's the one I'm going to use in this area. If you'd like to experiment on some of these vector shapes with some of these other texture fills, feel free by all means. Um, I'm going to come in here at this point and maybe think about coming in and changing the blend mode for this texture layer from normal over to something like multiply. 
and that's going to make that texture blend in a little bit better with the gradient fills that I had created previously for this particular asset. All right, great. So in this lesson, we've learned about how we can work with texture fills here inside of Sketchbook Designer. Now, at this point, I want to switch modes just a little bit. Um, we're working on this shoe asset, but maybe you're going to be creating a little bit more of a technical type of drawing here inside of Sketchbook Designer. Well, in the next lesson, we'll learn about a feature that can help you do just that. We're going to learn about working with grids here inside of Sketchbook Designer.